Welcome to the 100th episode of the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. That's a really long time. It's a really long amount of numbers. A hundred's like the big number. It's the big 100. <laughs> and we're celebrating. And it's a trip that we've come this far because as you know, Natasha, but our listeners may not, when we originally signed our eight fi- high eight-figure contract with the Cloud 10 Podcasting mm-hmm. Network, mm-hmm. Uh, a subsidiary of iHeartRadio, at the time it was not. Uh, that was only a dream in its, in its ninth cloud. But when we originally signed that contract, that development deal, it was for a four-episode limited series podcast. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And we have continued to persevere and had some amazing guests spread covid propaganda we've talked to so many people i love that we can video with people and we're zooming that i think about that there's been a technology burst i call it video video with people oh you call it video well no i just mean like sounds very hip no i i hate say I, i mean i hate the idea of zoom but there's something about seeing someone that has been really cool and, and very different than just hearing people. I like the idea of Zoom. I think it's the No, it's I know. I tether. just like everyone's kind of like over it. Over Zooming. I'm ready. What do, I, I got vaccine dreams, baby. Did I tell you I got vaccinated? You did? Yeah. I went down to a not an official site. It was uh, this guy named uh, Big Mook. And uh, he, he just had some and he, he tied me off. And he shot me up. I, this sensation called a jab, Moshe. He jabbed me up, and I would say the sensation was um, like there was delicious, ecstatic sand running through my body, and I fell asleep and I woke up, um, and I, I've never felt that kind of ecstasy and relief before. And so this, is like, you went and got heroin. Do you think that's what it was? Do you think that's what? Okay, Mook, I see what you're doing. I see the game that you're playing. What are your vaccine dreams out? When you get vaccinated, Tosh, when you're a fully vaxxed person, mm-hmm. what, is, what's your, what is your load star? What are you going to... We could... Oh, my God. We could finally have sex again. Um, I would like to... I mean... I, th- I think it'd be really fun to, like, go to vintage stores <laughs> vintage stores <laughs> and like antique i like looking at like antifa antique it- places like antique stores and thrift stores and just kind of like roaming around markets and like you know i do think i'm gonna be a little more weary of people though like i had this realization like I'm wary I, or weary weary i'm sorry i had this realization that i really miss and want to see people i know and like but i really don't want to see strangers Oh, interesting. So you think you're kind of permanently damaged? I don't know. I feel like I don't want another, I don't want someone I don't know coming up to me. And I I think that's going to be hard to shake. Like my friends, <coughs> once we're all vaccinated, yes, of course, I want to see them more than ever. But just random people, I don't know. You think you're permanently a little bit spaced out from humans. Well, it's weird. They keep doing all these like this gluts of articles. Like first they're like, the women are experiencing it so hard in the pandemic, which is true. But then every woman reads that and gets even more depressed. And then yesterday I read this, like four different articles about how COVID has like melted your brain. Right. And like people can't think of, like they can't think of words and it's not normal for us to be so oh, like sedentary. like when you did wear, weary instead of wary. <laughs> exactly. You got that COVID <laughs> brain. <laughs> Exactly. So I feel like my vaccine dreams are to, to like, avoid most people. No, to get shot out of this like torpidness. Yes, you got it. You that, got that. You're sharp. You're back, baby. I don't know if you say torpidness though. I don't know, but I liked it. Well, I you want to get torpedoed out of torpid. <laughs> yes. Okay, I like it because um, I, yeah, we're just it's it's definitely. And then, oh, so this I was going to tell you, I was reading all these articles and I was like, oh, yeah, I think that's why I'm getting dumb now, too. It's because, you know, there's no novelty in life anymore and I am not being physically active as much and our brains aren't meant for that. And it's just sedentary and makes you stupid slowly. Well, that's interesting. I don't feel stupider than I did no, I don't feel stupider. Really? Mm, no, I don't. I don't. Because I, I, I sometimes will talk to you and you're like, 
Oh, I feel. What? Oh, I'm definitely. Uh, I'm definitely tired of talking you're... to you. <laughs> no question about that. I could use a little bit of a breather. But you do zone out. But I don't know. I, I don't think that's because you've become dumb. Uh, thanks, hon. <laughs> I um, but those are those are heavy heavy d- desires. I my I got three words for you. Yes. Three hour massage. Ooh, that'd be nice. That's all I care about. That's I don't give all a shit. you care about? I don't give a shit about getting back to the human condition or, uh, you know, eschewing my uh, anathema for people. I want to see what I'm saying. See what I just did? And eschewing my anathema. My brain is pretty sharp still. I want to get destroyed by a massage therapist for a, such a long time. I want to try for the first time in my life to have a massage so long, I'm like, all right, dude, that's enough. I, I don't need any more. That sounds cool. That's my goal. I want to do an outdoor dance party so that like no one can worry at all. Ever. I know of one. You do? Yes. It happens every Labor Day weekend in the Black Rock Desert oh, in Nevada. God. It's an outdoor dance party. <laughs> it's a It's a load of fun. I'm good. Are you talking about Burning Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. We don't know if they're doing Burning Man, but there is a uh, a, a counter Burning Man festival that's uh, being uh, touted as an alternative right now called Every When, and it's literally just people that are too COVID skeptical to not <laughs> go to Burning Man. It's Can, called what? Every When, like instead of everywhere. Yay! Every When. Every When. That's a very dumb name well they have covid brain too although they don't <laughs> believe the lie but i mean think about the think about that demographic of people from the burning man community who are already like i wouldn't say the most like we're gonna get vaxxed we believe that what the government is saying a demo of people of that group the people who are like we're not gonna stay home no matter what Think about the demographic of that festival and how little you would like to be partying with those people during a, a, a viral pandemic. Sounds bad. Well, it sounds every when. <laughs> I will not be attending every when. Well, I didn't mean to be a downer about no, it wasn't COVID a downer. brain. I'm no, just letting it was you know. You, you kept it real. You know what you did, Natasha? Hmm. You kept it a hundred. And this is our hunt it episode. Oh, I had a thought though. I think if I really want to see, you're doing great already. Torpedo you myself out of torpidness. Get that double T. Um, I can't. I think I would have to do it. Like, I think I'd have to take a week where I'm like, I'm not going to look at my phone. Mm. I'm not going to look at the so news. So you're you don't like the telephone, the internet. I think that the internet, because we're so sedentary, and I'm staring at my phone so much, I'm reading so many articles, and I'm spending way much more time on the internet than I ever have. And it it just makes me not myself. You're telling me. Let me just like, see. Like, why I... am I jealous of some girl's abs or something? Or, you know, like, why am I zooming in on Martha Stewart's face, like, looking at her <laughs> earrings? Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> why am I reading, like, every stupid article I can get my hands on? I'm, you know, it, it's I know too much about stupid things so you're telling me i just want to clarify just to because this is kind of a bombshell for our 100th episode you came out out of left field with a brand new angle on your personality <laughs> you're telling me that natasha legero famed comedian actor and luddite and uh and philosopher philosopher producer is skeptical philosopher producer is skeptical i'm gonna put that on my bio of the effects that the smartphone is having no i know you know that and and i know i talk about a lot i'm just saying i felt it during during covid more than ever and i I wasn't even connecting those two things because i was like if i really want to like not get sucked into something and and really make like um like be able to join society again i just feel like i need some me time like where I'm not like looking at the phone. Like we've had. You I know, walked in on you having a little me time just the other day. What do you mean? You were furiously masturbating using oh 15 God. vibrators that we got from Third Lo- Third Love. No, that's the bra company. <laughs> uh, it's called Dame. You had your Dame. You had a Dame in the rear. You had a Dame up front. <laughs> you had a. You had the 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 spongy. Um, yeah, the me time. All right. Well, I wasn't really talking about phone use. I was just saying I thought it would be, I think it's just going to be like a, I guess what I'm saying is I think it might be like a spiritual effort on our parts or something. To get back to each other, you mean? Well, yeah, maybe because like, why do I not want anyone to come near me? 
Well, my friend Louis Katz, famed comedian, the the R, the R crumb of comedy, I call him. Uh, we went for a hike the other day, unmasked and holding each other, and um, it was very weird. Actually, it was it was we were there to pr- to, to promote our COVID skepticism, but it, the actual physicality of what we were doing, we were face to face, nose to nose, no mask, holding each other's waists, but on a hike, so it made it very difficult. At any rate, that's not the point of the story. He said something very interesting. Which was that uh, he moved here from New York in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, not moved, but he's he's been here for a few months and he's going back to New York. So he did like half 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 a pan um, in New York and half a pan in L.A. And he was saying that um, that he thinks like because of the lifestyle that L.A. allows people to live, which is. Uh, indoor and like you know we have bigger living spaces than new york and we have some a lot of people have yards and stuff like that that you can kind of stay indoors that the people in la are like have developed this like on pandemic onset agoraphobia in a way that people in new york city have not because those people they got little apartments and they can't and even regardless of how nice their place is when they walk outside they're like it's life there is still people out in the streets okay i'm gonna go do my business so maybe we should have been in new york this whole time did louis say it a little faster than that (laughs) oh my god sorry honey i don't have covid brain and i have a lot to say i got a lot of sharp thoughts to get out um anyway that those are my thoughts i think i'm done now all right well let's take a call you want to take a call i want to take a call let's take a call Now we're going to talk to Brooke in Salt Lake City. Brooke, what's up? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Yes, good. Did you did you watch Murder Among the Mormons, Brooke? Yes, I did. And what what thoughts have you? It's interesting. I am. I am not active and I haven't been active since I was a teenager, but I I don't know. It explains a lot. Does it? (laughs) <laughs> what does it explain when you say active you mean an active mormon no she means heroin yeah. a heroin user <laughs> ivy drug user right <laughs> right <laughs> wait can i ask you a question brooke yeah how old were you when you stopped being a religious mormon um well i knew that i didn't want to continue being mormon when i was like eight but well, what what happened when you like what was the thing that made you know as someone so young Um, I had a teacher that told me that I wouldn't be able to see my, um, lesbian aunts after I died because they were lesbian. (laughs) (laughs) He told you that? Yeah. An eight year old? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But, but wait, but Brooke, what was the part where you decided not to be a Mormon? We didn't ask you what was the truth bomb that made you realize Mormonism was right. No, but how old were you when you left though? Um, I stopped going to church when I was 17. Okay, great. Now, here's my question. I have heard a rumor that in teenage Mormon circles, maybe you can answer this, that the girls, because they they are not um, sexually active, will brag about how good they are at dry humping. Is that true at all? (laughs) They'd be like, oh, my dry humping skills are just out of this world. They're on the fourth planet of Xenon <laughs> and or whatever. And if you say that's not true, Moshe will keep telling the story. <laughs> so maybe you don't want to know the answer, Moshe. I didn't really hang out with other Mormon girls. Uh, all right. You sidestepped it. I'm gonna, Then I get we're, to keep telling it. By the way, we're wasting Brooke's time. Brooke, please tell us why you called. Um, so I'm calling because my, so my husband's ex-girlfriend, um, they were high school sweethearts and had a kid when they were 18. Um, she texts me often and she'll come over and I just feel like she wants to have a relationship that I'm not quite, I don't know. I don't want, I don't really want to like be friends, but I don't really want to, I don't know. It's kind of a friendship that's like one-sided and kind of aggressive Mm -hmm. with wanting to be friends. I just... So she texts me all the time. She sends me pictures of her and my husband when they were in high school. And um, she sends me gifts a lot, which I find really bizarre. (laughs) Like what? What would she get you? Um, So like little treat baskets with like marijuana products and... 
a big complaint complaint this sounds awesome hold on she's (laughs) she's the mother uh she's the mother of his they have a kid together right does the kid live with you or with her with her i see because so she kind of has to be around a lot because you're like semi helping raise her kid right right so it's like at first i was like oh my god you need to have such better boundaries but then now i'm like well you know if i was a mom and in that situation Yes, I, but I mean, she's sending you drugs, so <laughs> I don't know if that really tracks. What do you think? I mean, because I, I do think like, how 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 does she act with him? Um, she's really friendly. They text mostly about the kid, but occasionally she will also send him photos from like when they were in high school or like stuff that he wrote in her yearbook. It's or like uh, prom pictures. Stuff like that. Do you think she still likes him? You know, I'm kind of torn because she is married to someone that they went to high school with before. <laughs> she really but... made her way around that high school. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not really, I'm not sure if there's like an ulterior motive or. But the primary thing here is that you're just a little skeeved out by the cloyingness of this relationship. That and, it's... and it's something, it's not the kind of friendship she wants with her husband's ex-wife it's not like a chill i'm over here i we're in the same family i'm it's like i want to i want to live in your life a little bit right right so she actually she came over in december so my birthday's in september and she brought me a late birthday present like three months later and she met my dog and she loved my dog which was great but then she sent me a text later that was like I loved your dog so much. I had to get myself one that was similar and bought a puppy that's the same breed. Oh, this the is the same little... breed. It's the same dog. Like they look the same. Okay, Just... that's I'm I'm officially creeped out at this oh. point. What's her kid like? Your son. Uh, don't answer that. <laughs> great. <What? He's> sweet. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, this is a tough one because here's your dilemma. I mean, I, the kid thing is like everything. Yeah, your dilemma is the you already know your dilemma, which is that in any other situation, you would be like, hey, this is a little much for me, or you would just straight up stop communicating and stop responding. But if you do anything like that, you're going to create a permanent awkwardness at the best case scenario, permanent awkwardness in your family unit. That will not go away, especially if you say to someone like that who's so like thirsty to say, hey, the way you approach being my friend is a little much. She'll be so humiliated. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so bad. It won't be like mellow. She won't be like, gosh, I'm sorry. I'm tripping. It'll be like this drama thing. Well, I think there's a way for Brooke to maybe dial it, you know, like just dial it. Yeah, no, no. Just like um, I'm with you. What's the word like? Um, you ratchet need to, it down but you know but you need to dominate this woman in a way and let her know like she can't you know what i mean like like if the kid weren't involved what would you tell her like here's here's a trick i do <laughs> with someone like who's very annoying who i don't like I'm not saying that that's how you feel about her in case she hears this but um i like will take longer to respond like you For know sure what i mean you should start doing some- you can like you know you can in, in five hours and then you're like oh haha sorry i'm busy or whatever that was busy and you can just sort of low like that precedent that you always have to write someone back can start to like right grow. that's what i have been doing oh, you have okay. no effect right like days maybe a week or two before responding and she'll keep sending me stuff like links to videos that she thinks is funny like tiktoks and i don't respond what would your ideal w- relationship with her be because she's going to be in your life no matter what so what what would it look like probably just be civil like i i'd like to be friends but i just feel like there's too many expectations i guess from her side it just feels kind of one-sided and it's more of a high maintenance friendship than i Will he am like, equipped for it? I got oh, it. Oh, I got an idea. Oh, you got an idea uh, too. We both go. No, wait. Who do you call on? Uh, Natasha. Thank oh. you. God. You need to um, ask your husband how he got away from her and get some <laughs> advice from him because <laughs> he did it. Right. Uh, oh, <laughs> but it, honestly, there's something to that that could link into my idea, which is my idea is. You need to, and I know this is not, as an ex-Mormon, you're going to have a harder time with this than a, than a regular human being, but you're going to have to lie 
I think it's time to like come up with a really good lie. What do you do for work? I'm a barista. Fuck. I wanted it to be something like really hardcore, but like, do you have like creative projects that you do? Not really. Ugh. I, what I'm trying to get at is I want you to tell her, hey, I got this X situation happening, whatever it is. Unfortunately, the barista thing, it's going to be difficult to be like, she I've can't been. can't lie about no, no, this. No, 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 no. Though, so Hold she's... on. Hold on. Hear me out. Unfortunately, you can't be like, God, I've been, I just have been pulling so many shots of espresso at work these days. Okay? <laughs> but basically, what I want is for you to be able to say, oh my God. I'm so busy right now with blank that it's going to be a while. I'm going to I'm going to have like a chunk of my life where I'm just not going to be able to respond to stuff. Like I just like it's not about saying you're creeping me out. I need a little space. It's about like whatever's happening. But in- the kind of people who do that, they're like always like working on a novel. Like that's a personality type that like sends out the email like don't email me for. I mean, is that that's very realistic? She's going to have to ha- her husband is going to want to know what who, she's talking about. Who, what do you mean? I'm not saying lie to your husband. He's going to know because no, she's going to tell him in on the on the lie. You say right now I'm in this crazy period in my life where I'm so busy like I, it's going to be a while and I'm I'm going to be really spotty on responding to you. And because any conversation, this is my feeling about this, any conversation that involves you saying I need space is going to just be gross. You're, it's not going to work. So I have said before, like I, I'm going through some stuff, like it's going to be a while before I need to. <laughs> <laughs> when she brought me, so when she brought that uh, delayed birthday gift, she also brought me a self-help book. I uh, love it. If that's your fault. That's not her fault. I'm putting that one on you because you're like, dude, I'm in, a, I'm in a mental health craze right now. I, I, I need some space. She's like, no problem. I, I can help you. Well, she's, she seems like she's like kind of a nurturer, right? Like, you know, she's. Yes. You, th- you think it's manipulative. Both. Right. Sure. Okay. You have two options. Well, that- but wait, can I ask a question? What is your, what is your husband? Do you guys like make fun of her a little bit together or is he totally on her side? He's not on her side. He's pretty Switzerland about it. He's he's a Buddhist and he's super like Yeah. He wants me to practice kindness towards all people. And he encourages me to respond to her, especially when she sends gifts. But I So you couldn't rope him into if you wanted to do the nuclear option, which is one of your options. You could you couldn't rope your Buddhist meditating, counting his wrist beads husband to say, "Hey, I love you. You're my you're my baby mama." And but but Brooke is just feeling a little overwhelmed by the relationship. So maybe you can you can give the relationship to me and give her space. He wouldn't do that for you. Probably not. The, right. See, this is why I make a bad Buddhist because I always want to kind of talk shit. But he's like, no, I want you to practice kindness. And I'm sure he's a great guy, but, you know, here's okay. he's not being that fun. I think you have a couple options. I think you have three. I, I'm down to three options. Do you have anything else? Because I'm, I'm about to do it. She's going to tell you she already tried that. I don't think so. Okay. At, at least I know she won't try option three. Okay. okay. Option one is to just go for it and to just say to her, you know, I love you. And I think you're awesome. I love your kid. And I love you in my life. But the I don't have space for this friendship to the degree that it exists between us right now. I just it's nothing personal with you. I just have a lot going on, and our friendship is important to me. But it's too much for me to operate at this level. But right? I, and, but you should also say that you love her daughter. But I'm not saying I agree with you. I'm not. Say, I'm saying these are options. I'm not saying. They're I would be very annoyed if my husband's. Uh, Mar- remarried and my kid was ha- spending half the time with some woman who's like I don't have time for you. <laughs> no, no, okay, I hear you. I hear you. That is a, that is an option. Okay. Option 2 is for you to kind of suck it up and be like, "You know what? I fucked up. I married this guy and it this is in for a penny in for a pound, you know? Life is suffering," as your husband would say. And uh and this is part of it. You you bought a package. You decided to marry a man that has a a a past. A, a child and a and an ex and unfortunately i mean how much suffering does this really create for you probably not that much you just got to kind of like roll with it right and ignore as you see fit and don't ignore and 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 deal with the consequences of having this person in your life you done i well there's option three but okay. i think it'll be the end of the call okay well then can i give a, an advice and then you can do your last option one? option three just remember that bro okay so i think one thing you could do with your husband what i would do is i would try to come up with 
three examples. I think the dog is a good one. And if you had two other things and you just kind of said, can I talk to you about her? You know, this happened, this happened, this happened. Maybe it's hard for you to understand. Like as a woman, it just makes me a little uncomfortable. Do you have any advice on just kind of like, you know, like ask, don't say like, I need you to lie for me, but just maybe really ask him and say, you know, you're his girlfriend or you're his wife, like come up and be real and just say, I, I just need a little guidance. And I, you know, I want to be able to accept it, but I just feel like it's just kind of rubbing me the wrong way. Is there anything you can think of that I could do, you know, so it doesn't, so she stops sending me pictures of whatever, you know what I mean? Like doesn't copy me or make me feel creepy. And then always also say like, you know, when I really adore your kid and, you know, I'm, I want to be, you know, you want to be like Switzerland too, but you don't want to be like the best friend, oh. you know? So you, maybe you can ask him, how can I be a little more neutral like you? Because she's kind of using you to like get in, you know, you don't have to tell him that, but I, I think I would start with him because he seems like he knows her better than anybody mm -hmm. probably. Okay. I'm going to do a two A. This is not three yet. Okay. <laughs> this is two A. It reminded me of what you were saying. Uh, two A is accept that this person's in your life and you have to kind of deal with it, but also divorce yourself from the idea that you owe this woman any energy. Like you are allowed to be a bad friend to her because she unilaterally decided that you guys were going to be friends in the first place. So you don't owe her a response to every text. You don't need to, it's not like you're trying to salvage a relationship. You're trying to not create a bad one. So just like if she texts you and it makes you, and you don't want to write back, don't write back. You owe her nothing. All you owe her is politeness. You don't owe her uh, engagement. That's my, my option 2A. That's what I think. Okay. Final, final option, option three, and I think the best option, and I've been thinking about it ever since you first uh, posed your issue, is I think this is really good. Now, hear me out. You're not going to like it at first. You got to, you have to fuck her. You have to have sex with her, and here is why. It will create um, a really intense dynamic in the friendship that will probably break the two of you up. And here's the really beautiful part. You will be able to see your aunts in in hell. You'll be able to go see them. <laughs> and your husband's going there also. He's a Buddhist. It's like, this is perfect. You get to really spend eternity with them and see your aunts again. That's my advice. Hook up with hook up with your, her, your husband's baby mama. <laughs> Was any of that helpful besides what Moshe just said? Um, option three is not exactly what I will consider on a normal day. <laughs> <laughs> Very diplomatic. Here's your problem. I see your problem. I just said something so obnoxious and ridiculous and you are being so polite and engaging <laughs> with me. Well, you know, that's not, I think, a thing that I probably would. Can, can, I can see, I can feel how you respond to those Yeah, texts. maybe you should just start being a little more rude. You need to be, you need to get rid of those, the, your, your, you still got the Mormon in you. You're kind, you're polite. You got to get, get rid of that and, and just be, be a bitch. Well, I'm not very assertive. So as far as setting boundaries goes, like I have a hard time with um, verbalizing them. And I feel like not all boundaries should be verbalized. But in this instance, I have a hard time understanding how I could verbalize these boundaries without coming off as a dick. I, I really think a therapist could help you. Like th they could get you if you if you just talk to somebody about this and just, it's probably a good thing for you to learn in general. I mean, it's kind of beyond what we could do, but like just, I'm reading like parenting books and it's all about like having a clear statement and you know what I mean? And it's like just hearing, seeing the book or maybe it's a book you can read, but just sometimes when you see other people put things very easily and you have a script and you just like see that it works, you can kind of change your thought patterns. That's what self-help is all about. And it's, it can be very helpful, you know, because a lot, some people were taught certain things, but if you weren't taught it and you're steering your own ship and, you know, you were raised Mormon and now you're kind of coming into your own and, you know, you, there's, it's not like you're complete, you know, you should still be working on yourself. So I think talking to someone to help if you want to become a little more assertive and have more boundaries, and maybe this is a test for you, even though she's, you know, related to your stepkid or whatever, and you still have to see her, you really can have boundaries with someone like that. And, yeah, and could, take more control. You could definitely say, you would be in your rights to say, hey, this has nothing to do with you, but I just don't have the time or energy to give this friendship the, the energy that it needs. I, I don't have time for this friendship. So, f you know, I just want you to know that not, it's not personal if I'm not as engaging with you as you are with me. I think that would create high drama. That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. but it is certainly within your rights to say i just think option three is something you shut your brain off to it really quickly and i don't think you gave it its due diligence 
Or what if every time she writes you anything, you just write LOL? That's a good idea. I like no matter what. <laughs> She's like, how's Piper? And you write back, LOL. <laughs> She's like, are you mad at me? LOL. Yeah, I like that. I'm sorry. It's really hard. But I, but I do think talking to a therapist about, you know, person per, like verbalizing, you just said, I can't imagine myself verbalizing something like that. And, you know, those are, it's kind of cool to be able to like ask for what you want and say things. And sometimes hearing other people say them or, you know, put, give you the words, it can really help. Even if it's just in your head and it, it could change the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I think it's really important to work on the parts of yourself that you want to change or make stronger or who doesn't want to have good boundaries. I, I you know, I don't want to be in terrible conversations n with no clue how to ever get away from people. Well, like then you shouldn't have signed up to do this <laughs> podcast. A hundred episodes in, she's still having it. Brooke, I got a lie, a final lie for you here. I think you're you're onto some wis you're in some wisdom zone, Natasha. What if you if you if you can't set a boundary and you can't just accept that she's in your life what if you say to her a, a, a nice lie that's kind of true which is um oh i don't have time i just don't have any time for any of fr friendships right now i'm like totally just in a self mode and i'm like i'm not doing i'm just stepping back from all of my friendships it doesn't have to be it's not true but you say that, and then she's like, oh, it's not personal. Gosh, Brooke's going through some shit. You'll get a book probably on how to maintain friendships and not lose them or whatever. But Okay, here's what you do. You Google best ten, five best books on setting boundaries, and then you order them all, have them come to the house, and just start reading them all the time. And then take one when you go talk to your husband and ask him how to get rid of her. I thought you were going to say you, you Google five best books on setting boundaries, and every time she sends you a basket of weed, you send her one of the books. <laughs> You start sending her messaged books. <laughs> well, let us know if there's any if there's any uh, movement. That's a really hard one. This is tough. What do you, you think you're going to do? You don't want to create drama. What do you think you're going to do? Um, I don't know. I feel like I so I'm okay with kind of doing what I've been doing, which is just kind of not responding all the time. I feel like adding a response kind of encourages the continuing of this, but totally. I just, oof, I, uh, you can mm. add a little time each time so. and, and never give her any information. So mm -hmm. you're just like, haha, okay. Yes. You know, like she it's, will, she might get the hint eventually. If you just start become, if you start diminishing the, uh, diminishing the amount of information you text and increasing the amount of time between texts, think of it as a mission. It's not just like a strategy. It's a long-term tactic right? It's, mm -hmm. I'm going to slowly add more and more time between responses and slowly going down, down, down in the amount of information till I'm down to an LOL once a month. I feel like a trained therapist would know exactly what to tell you. All right, fine. I mean, this is like 101. Like, how do I create, how do I set boundaries? Right. So this is a, and the good news is it's a one session. This sounds like a one session. <laughs> But I still think you should consider what we did close enough to professional help that you should be incredibly grateful. Yeah. I wish it wasn't too late. I'd love to ask my therapist. Oh, just call our, your therapist. Oh, God. All right. Well, listen. Our, also, our listeners will probably write in with some, in, with some uh, unsolicited advice. So, uh, Brooke, good luck to you. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep thinking about this too, Brooke. There's got to be a way. To e maybe even manipulate it or something. Write in, write in, or or leave on the voicemail how Brooke should handle this. Brooke? Because because if if she wasn't in your life because of the kid, you could just it would still be hard, but you'd have one weird conversation and then she'd be gone. Wait, I have a question. I'm sorry. Is she hot at all? Like, is she hot? Moshe. Okay, Brooke. Thank you. It's been nice <laughs> talking to you. <laughs> well. Okay. Bye bye. 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 I felt like we left her so yep. unsatisfied. Yeah, I know. We, I but did. that's a, I mean, that's an impossible situation. It's an impossible. Well, I think honestly. I would go to the husband and be like, dude. But he won't do it. I, I really think that in the, that in the option she has available to her, the best option for her, this is my, my actual opinion. The best option she has is to just be a kind of cold person to her. Like the best option available, the most healthy option would be to go what you did, 
learn, go to a therapist, figure out a script on how to set a boundary, set a healthy boundary with her. That's the most psychologically healthy one. But based on the little context clues she was giving, I do think that that would backfire and create drama in her life for for the rest of the time that she has to interact with this person. So what I think the best, the e- the, the easiest path for this person to do is what you said. Write back a ha-ha once a, once a, a week and feel absolutely no... Uh, no pressure to honor that relationship. Remember we had a crazy neighbor? Yes. And they le- they left us alone for like two years. Right. We had a big blowout and finally she left us alone. So then I was like, I'll give her a, some Christmas chocolates. Right. We were like giving neighbors the <laughs> little so we're, Christmas packet. So we, packet. we give her the chocolates and then she started bothering us the again. The next week, bang, bang, bang on our door. Ringing the doorbell because yep. the vacuum was too loud. So basically, I... I let her re I invited her to re-engage with me. No, a relationship is like a plant. It needs energy, sunlight, water to grow. And right. when you start to sometimes it can be very difficult start to kill to the plant. Start to drop chocolates on their door. When you start but when you start to di- to diminish some of the energy that you give to it, it might take a mm-hmm. while but eventually the relationship most of the time the person on the other end will start to slowly receive the the message and move on to bother other people. Right. Speaking of bothering other people, yeah. do you think we should take another call? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we are going to call Nila in Atlanta. Nila. Hi, Nila. Nila. It's we Nella. Can't... Nella. Hey, right. Nella. I took a shot, Nella. What can you do? I was going to say Okay, Nella. everyone calls me Nila, so you're good. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Moshe, and as you can imagine, it hasn't been a easy road for me either. <laughs> no, I, um, I can't imagine. So, Nella, what's going on? How can we help? So, it's, our, it's our hundredth episode. Well, yeah, you you made it to our hundredth episode, just so you know. But we we actually don't have any answers tonight. So well, <laughs> our last call we got to the limits of our capability, and uh, my only suggestion was for our caller to uh, sleep with her husband's baby mama. So <laughs> don't expect a lot, Nella. All right. Well, I think mine's pretty simple. And congratulations, by the way. I'm honored Thank to be you. on your hundredth episode. We're honored to have you. We okay. asked for you. <laughs> Yes, you, you asked for Mila. Um, That's right. <laughs> so mine, I think, is pretty simple. Um, or at least, you know, compared to other relationship questions you get. Um, so my boyfriend and I have been together for seven years. And one of the first things that we bonded over when we started dating was our love and our obsession of pugs. So it was like this whole thing that we just both loved pugs. And it was this idea that we were one day going to get a pug together and go on walks with our pug. And seven years later, we don't have a pug. <laughs> Damn. So I was just like, what? The, did he lie to me? Like, did he pretend to love pugs so that he would mm. date? You got, you, got, you got pugged. I got him this when we first started dating. And it was like, this is, you know, for now until we get a real pug. The, he got, got you the stuffed pug. No, no she I got, got it. this room. <laughs> So, so you're I'm like, so stuck with this. So you're like a Comic-Con nerd, but for pugs. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> okay. Do so you what? still want a dog, a pug? Well, I grew up with pets. I had cats and I had my sister's dogs would come visit when I was little. And so, yeah, I always just had pets around in my life. And I think they're very important, especially during this pandemic. I think it would have made a difference to have a pet when I was like stuck in my apartment. What's stopping um, you from yeah. telling him, it, let's get a pug or just bringing one home? Yeah, well, that, exactly. What well, fuck this dude. You're this, waiting for him to give you the okay to get a pug? I know. You're trying to get a, a green light on a pug over here. It's like, it's International Woman's Month. <laughs> Nella, you, Nila, whatever your fucking name is. <laughs> better get to the pound and get yourself a fucking pug. <laughs> What's that? Get yourself a dog whose eyes fall out. What's that dog's eyeballs fall Can you imagine if, if pugs had COVID, everyone would get it. They're just always like sneezing out of every, oh, yeah. their ears, their nose. <laughs> I'm sorry. Those dogs are gross. Okay. But yeah, why can't you just get one? Okay. So we live in an apartment. We both work in news. So we move around a lot. And so that's been a big issue. 
Mm-hmm. And I agree with him when he argues that we shouldn't get a dog until we buy a house because we don't want to have one in an apartment. Yo, what? Um, it's a pug. You're not small buying small dogs a- like small well, spaces. Yeah, you're not buying a fucking Australian Shepherd or a fucking a Rhodesian Ridgeback. It's like a little barely even living troll. Yeah, buy the thing, <laughs> put it on your mantle, put, give it a pile of kibble, and wait for its eyes to fall out. What did you call it? Dismantled troll? <laughs> I'm just saying it's a it's a lazy little dog. You guys, it can live in a that's a it's literally an apartment. Hold on a second. Hold on. It's, How it's you, an apartment dog. I don't usually do this, but I'm gonna take my take my phone out while I'm talking to you. And I'm gonna just Google the phrase best dogs for apartments. Hold on, let's see what let's see what comes up. All right. Nella. Is it Nella? Yeah. Okay, I got it. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. Here we go. This is what it says. I got the okay, French Bulldog. Pug is number four on the list, Nella. Is right here. I'm not even kidding. Pug is right there. Look at that little ugly fuck. This <laughs> little wrinkled fucking moron. You got to get one. Right. So that makes sense. And I would say that to him, too, when he comes up with the argument that we live in an apartment. But the other thing that I realized is that he he never grew up with pets. So to him, the idea of having a pug, a dog was like great. But then when we talk to other people that have pets, he gets all flustered about the fact that like there's fur everywhere. It gets on your clothes. And he's oh like my God. super upset about that. And I'm like, pugs don't even shed that much, I don't think. And even if they did, it wouldn't be a big deal. Um <laughs> Nella, who's the driver in this relationship? I feel like it is probably you. I mean, we both do a little driving. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, really, Nella? I feel like if you wanted it, you could just fucking manhandle this fool and say we're getting a pug. I'm setting a I, I might just have to. We are moving to a new apartment. We might get a bigger apartment. So I think at that point, it's going to be like, okay, like, this is big enough. We'll get a oh, dog. I got it. What you got? Get it for him for his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Just get the pug. He'll fall in love with it. Get is there? Are you guys moving around any kind of holiday? Is there Christmas, birthday? No, well, then say summer. like it's for spring. Housewarming gift. How about that? I wow. brought my friend Jenny a dog for a housewarming gift, and it was a very. I mean, I had found it on the street, but it changed her life. She was, and she was like, at first, she was like, I can't have this. Like that's how I've met all our dogs. This dog. I was trying to find a home for her for three days. And I was like, oh, she's so cute. And then this dog was trying to find me. And I was like, oh, my God. And then this dog Moshe brought along. That was, you know, I'll never forgive him for that. No, But I'm just saying, like, you know he, what I he mean? Re- he He's not going to get it um, mentally because he, he's, like, too afraid of all these different things. So he just needs to, like, fall in love with the dog. I got it, Nella. You guys are both successful, right? You guys both have money. Yeah, relatively. Okay, so you can afford to get like a dog sitter when you need to if you guys are working or if you guys are out on a hot day in, in Atlanta news or whatever it is. You uh you tell your tell this nerd that you live with that's like neurotic about dog hair. You say, Nella is bringing a housewarming gift to our new apartment and Nella won't take no... F- just, just start seeding it now. Just so you know, I'm getting us a housewarming gift when... When we move to the new apartment. Oh, that's good. I'm doing that. And just be like, it's happening. And don't even say what it is, but he'll know. You know, you say something like housewarming, housebreaking gift. And then day one, I'm talking day one, show up with a pug. He's not going to be able to get rid of it. He yeah. won't. He, he's desperate to be with you. I can tell. I, I, and, and, and also, you know, y- you should tell him if he really it has, you know, is upset about it. You have to say, listen. I need to find out what you're like with another living thing. If I'm ever going to like mm-hmm. have a kid with you or I don't know. I mean, I think it's really important that someone can take care of something. I mean, if he's just like, oh, the, the, the dog hair. Right. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's just like Get the live pug. a little. And, 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 I know- and, and if he freaks out, then maybe he's not the guy for you. And you kind of want to know these things, not like another 10 years down the road. Yeah. I mean, we've been together for seven years, so... I think he's the right guy at this point. (laughs) But I will say this. I was talking to him um, just the other day, and I found out that when he was, like, in his 20s, he had a friend that had him pet sit his dog for him. And apparently, while the person was gone, he was pet sitting 
the dog died in his arms. <laughs> in his arms? <laughs> like he was his... holding it. Like he seemed lethargic or something and he was holding it. And then it just like <laughs> what is stopped this? moving. So he has like trauma what is around so, the yes. dog. So then I was like, oh my gosh, that's what it is. Is it? Like, it's either. The, it's, well, it's either de- way, it, you got to throw, throw him into the fire. It's definitely that. The question <laughs> you have to ask yourself, it's 100% that. The question you have to ask yourself is, is this a true story or is the man that I've known for seven years a uh, person with a dog murder in his background? <laughs> and he's like, I was holding it and it just uh, all of a sudden, it sounds like Lenny of, of Mice and Men. I, I think... I think I know what the actual thing... Yes, it's definitely this weird psychological block this guy has. But your problem is... Tell me if you disagree with me, Natasha. Nella, your problem is that somehow this pug thing... This is the like least sexy thing uh, in the world. But somehow you've cross-contaminated con- this pug thing with ro- with a romance story in your mind. And you don't want to buy the pug. You want him to buy you the pug and say, oh, oh our cute little thing is going to be, look, I brought you the pug. It's our pug. But n- he's showing you uh, probably through trauma or whatever that it ain't happening. And so in the end, it's much less important that he does the romantic gesture than that you get this relationship with a dog that you want. And the three of you will have the relationship, exactly. you know, and it'll be really sweet. And you guys will walk it and he'll fall in love and you'll get to see it and you'll see like it'll be really cool right. you know and if he like freaks out well then you that's know that's new information too but yeah the, the exactly what Natasha's saying a month after you get the pug that whole thing about like oh it was part of our thing in the beginning will be gone because you'd just be like oh this is our little Roscoe and we love him and even though he has no eyeballs that's a good name Roscoe yeah or Moshe <laughs> if you get the pug will you name it Moshe you know what Yes, if this helps, I do will. Do not name your pug Moshe. <laughs> Just It'll get be the, the fucking the pug. pug. That's the name of the episode. Just get the fucking pug. Um, yes, Buy get yourself the pug. a fucking pug. <laughs> <laughs> Nella, get the pug. Housewarming day. We want to see a picture. Send us a picture of you and and this uh, neurotic man you're dating. And this will be a healing for him. You're providing him with a healing moment from his childhood trauma. He needs that from yeah. you, Nella. Get a cute one if you can find one. Oh, get it small. Yeah, small pug. SP. Sweet. Well, thank you, guys. Okay. okay. So Good very luck. helpful. I appreciate Good. It. I'm so glad we were. This is so much easier than the last call. <laughs> I, yeah, I kind of figured mine would be pretty easy compared to other ones I've heard. But I think the primary takeaway from this is kind of was what Natasha's saying. Like, it, I, I, in a relationship, what matters is the is the experience you have with the thing. You know, just like in a human relationship, you always have these like things like these rules or you know these little things that you think matter and then you get into a relationship and you have seven years of experience with the person like oh all that bullshit at the beginning didn't matter at all all the like dating and courtship stuff that i thought was so important didn't matter at all what matters is all this love that i have and these experiences i have together same thing with a fucking dog you're like oh it's got to be this that eventually you just fall in love with the dog and have like 15 years of wonderful experiences tossing a bone to to roscoe and he won't go get it because pugs i don't think play fetch or mosha Moshe, young Moshe, <laughs> pug Moshe. All right, good luck. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Happy uh, 100th. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Now, that's the kind of advice call I want. What? I don't know what to do. I like pugs and I don't have one. Get a pug. Well, once I dated this guy and we bonded over like this album, mm-hmm. and I remember bringing that, it was a Neil Young album, and I remember bringing it up to him like, six months later and i was like D- where's because i went to, went to see his record collection i was like where's hawks and doves and he was like what what's that <laughs> like he had he was just doing it or he was like manipulating me early on even how you early on you made me think you liked like In- igmar bergman movies i do i just also like rambo <laughs> I like No, both. you also like Marvel. Those were our two. Fr- but no, but you know what, though, Natasha? That's not fair. I like Marvel movies, and I have the decent. I am watching all the Marvel movies in chronological when you order. Say, wait, that's what you're doing? Yeah. All the Marvel movies? Yeah, in timeline order. What? But Aren't ha- there like 20 that come out a year? I'm almost done. But the point isn't what you're saying. The point is that's that I, what you're doing down here? That's what I do, but I have the decency to leave you out of it. I think that's a decent thing. Thanks. That's not a bait and switch. 
Do you want a divorce? <laughs> I don't know why I got so upset about the Marvel movie. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'm not upset about, Natasha. What? Doing this podcast with you. It's been fun. I like it. I think it's fun to help people. It's fun to make fun of people. And it's fun to be able to work with the person that you love. Yeah, that is really nice. Yeah. I guess I'm saying I want a pug. <laughs> it, I want to pug you too. I want to pu- Actually, soon we can pug again. Your your poison oak will be gone. I've had poison oak for about 10 days. Let me tell you, listeners, <laughs> it is the most unbelievably brutal case of poison oak I've ever heard of. And I have it's been awful. <laughs> She's been fully incapacitated and in agony. <laughs> a- agony. Well, because you itch it like in the middle of the night, like the Benadryl wears off and you can't touch it. Telling the kid, don't touch me, gauze wrapped around your arm. It's been awful. Not for me, but for you. it's been awful for but me to watch. But then finally, after five days, Moshe was like, you need to call a doctor. Because I was she just trying She's to like, do... She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do some homebrew. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going to I'm toss this baking soda in the, in the tub. <laughs> And I was like, call the doctor. And dude, I didn't want to like find an online no, doctor. Here's here's the fucking the, the fly in the ointment of your like the phone is ruining everything. Five days into it, I was like, why are you not calling a doctor? Like call a doctor. And she's like, I don't know. I don't want to interface with some app. And I picked no, up. No, I didn't want to get into a portal and like have oh, to like sorry. give all my info. No, you didn't want to like, touch the phone. I didn't know where my I insurance picked up, card I was. I picked up my phone in I'm not joking or exaggerating. In 10 minutes, she was on the phone with a doctor. <laughs> and in a half an hour, she had the medicine and now is healing. So maybe there is something good about the phone after all. That was good. He gave me some pills. You picked it up for me. I did. And the the uh, wounds have stopped weeping. Dude, it was fucking gnarly. Well, it always happens to me, too, where someone's like, okay, just be careful. There's poison oak over there. And somehow she touches it. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I think it's because I don't really wear pants ever. So even if I'm like on a hike, I'm kind of in a dress or something. We'd be like watching a movie at night. I'd look over and there would be like a amber dr- droplet <laughs> of poison leaking out of your body. It just like coming down. And I was just It was so crazy. It was like a giant wound, weeping, seeping wound. No, they were they were you on. Know what it looked like? There were four of them. It was on each arm and each leg. Brutal. You know what it looked like? What? A pug's eyeball. Like pugs that, are really gross. That to like me. We- weepy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been friends with some of the pug? That's just in the background the whole time, and then they're like getting snot all over your knees, and you're just like. Maybe mm. this guy did some research, and he's just like, eh, "I'm good. I got." I, I think people think that's cute or something. Yeah. Listen, uh, if you have a secret that you would like to leave for us, call it. Leave it on our hotline: two one three two 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 eight six zero eight. You can also email us, endlesshoneymoonpod at gmail.com. Check us out on Instagram. Leave us a comment. If you'd like to be on the podcast, get some advice, email our producer, and you will get hooked up. We are at apple.co forward slash endlesshoneymoon, and we're on YouTube. We're everywhere. YouTube.com. But if you you watch on YouTube, make sure to join our page or however you do it. Subscribe. Subscribe. Five star. Leave a comment. We love you. We have so many five star reviews, honey. You don't need to tell people. I don't know. My point is. But definitely subscribe to our channel. We've created a community in these hundred episodes. I feel very good about the honeymooners. I feel very good about the state of this podcast. I'm excited to get on the road again. We should go to places. Let's go to places. That's what I want to do. Honestly, besides five-hour massage and torpedoing out of your torpidness, what I'm looking forward to is getting back into the, not just my community, but into like the world, traveling, seeing people, going to New York. I want to go to Paris. I want to go to Japan. I want to go to Mexico. I want to go to Hawaii. I want it all. And I want you to come with me. Okay. So you're going to have to get over whatever fear you have because I want to take you to... Darfur. Because <laughs> I love you. I love you too.